This is smithy.tv. back in the studio again that's twice this week so far with the third one tomorrow although it'll be probably won't air yeah. like that so that's fine <laughs> um but yeah so we are in the studio with like some what did you call him earlier uh-huh. Have we, are you calling him a hat? <laughs> <laughs> i've been called worse by better <laughs> <laughs> that's my password guys so fuck you <laughs> <laughs> but we are, we're sitting with uh, our good friend who we've not seen in like forever, it seems like. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. I think we chatted after we wrapped Sex After Kids. Yeah. But Jeremy Lalonde is back with us. Yay. Hi. So, yeah. I also called you our first legitimate guest. That's true. Legit- <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to, to us chatting in the food court at the zoo. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, that, there's that. Uh, and you guys were the first people we talked to about the movie. That's right. Too, I so remember kind that. Of that was a scoop. And fitting. It was a scoop. It was a scoop for us. Which was cool. Yeah. We were like all important for five minutes. For five <laughs> seconds. And then, we, and then we became whores on social media. Whore? Yeah. <laughs> Which you have not said in a while on air. I know. It's like a new year. I get nervous now. <laughs> I don't want to insult anybody. You insulted someone with the word whore? Oh, man. No. Most not, of your cast, luckily actually. Luckily, it's been like. <laughs> Who'd you call a whore? Oh, Cronert, first of all. Well, she is a whore. Let's be fair. <laughs> um. In what context? Pretty much everybody. Context? Well, it usually comes up with if somebody's worked a lot. So they go, oh, you've been on this, you've done this, you've done this, you're working on this, and you've got two That's more things called coming successful. up. And I'm like, yeah. Ooh. I'm like, you're all over the place, whore. <laughs> <laughs> it's called successful. That's called working. They're working actors. They're working. That'd be like calling you a whore for going to work five days a week. Whore. Yeah. That How dare you. I do stand on the corner a lot waiting for public transit. <laughs> like a whore. Like, like a, a whore. whore. In fact, I did call myself a whore earlier today, I think. For public transit? Or yesterday, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah you were calling him that. I was complaining about the fact that what he's you shot two movies, uh, pilot for a TV series, and we can't even get a fucking walk on. You guys are an actor. <laughs> Fuck you want me to do? Get, a, get, get in the union. <laughs> get union. Yeah, fine. When I do, buddy. <laughs> oh, when I do. <laughs> and technically, it's just a short film that we hope to become oh, a TV okay. series. We can't call it a pilot. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Although we'll be pitching it as such. Nice. <laughs> but you are here because... That's not, yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> because you've got a little... Oh your, your opus, Sex After Kids, is... The opus. Yeah. And there's a, you guys good. can't see it because the camera's pointed this way, but the poster's right there. It's right there. For inspiration. For inspiration. I can stare at it. <laughs> I can stare at Peter Callahan. And but yeah, it's opening at the Carlton. It's opening at the Carlton on February 7th. Um, we'll be there for at least a week. Um, although, hope, I think we've done enough t- pre-ticket sales that I think we've Wait, locked in the second week. But that won't be officially announced yeah. until after the weekend. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and we're Pre-ticket do- sales are at the box office, right? Yeah. I mean, we love Carlton. We, we appreciate the fact that you're screening the movie. Carlton's a bit behind the curve when it comes to their technology so the only way to get um pre-ticket sales is, is to, get to actually go to the carlton unfortunately okay. what we've been doing i don't know if this will get up in time but we have been if you email us at sack movie at gmail.com um our mm. wonderful producer jennifer Lau has been mm. taking pre-orders for people that are coming in from out of town and stuff just to make sure cool. that we can get tickets to the opening weekend because it's i mean the carlton is also not a massive cinema there's yeah. only like 100 ish seats depending on what theater you're in so, but they've been good. They, they, uh, we've done well. Like the first screenings, over half sold. Cool. Nice. Um, and they've said that if if it keeps on going, they'll put us in the biggest theater. So they'll they'll add yeah. six good. seats. <laughs> so I, I haven't got my tickets yet, and we're like trying to decide which show or how yeah. many of them we're gonna go to. 
Well, we can. Oh, do I have? I have my notebook. I can tell you who's doing the Q and A. Well, well I, we 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 haven't been, announced that. I have to and we were that. under the impression that she and I were like hosting the Q and A. Yeah, we're like. You, we may as well. We were moderating. I believe, was we might show. be able to make that work. <laughs> first weekend clubs hosting the first night. I feel like we know everyone. It's true. <laughs> it's true. We do know everybody at this point. It's true. Uh, yeah. So we're so we're doing Q and A's for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wow. And then on Monday Maybe night push. is uh, Amanda Bruegel's charity Bruegel's yeah, Army. We're doing a charity screening yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. So they're doing. There's like a, I don't. They're, they're not doing a Q and A, but there's going to be like there's like a, a meet and greet. There's a meet and greet after. Yes, yeah, so you yeah. can get signatures yeah. and that kind of stuff. And we're selling merch all weekend. So nice. There's going to be T-shirts. Who doesn't want merch? T-shirts, t-shirts buttons, oh. and car bumpers, stickers. You guys don't drive, Did right? they still do that? No, but I can stick stuff on stuff. I know, I should have brought them. I, <laughs> I, can stick I was in a mad rush. I was putting my child to sleep before I came here. And yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> when you were like, he's on. I was like, said I, he's on his way. And I'm like, well, the kids are in bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least one. I have to get one in bed. That's my rule. If I get one in bed, then I'm allowed to go off and do, do stuff. <laughs> That's the rule at home. Um, yeah, so, so Friday night, I mean, it might change uh, just based on things come up. But Friday night, I believe, is uh, um, Polly Mose, Chris Holden Reed, Peter Callahan. Kate Hewlett and NS are doing a Q&A that night with me. So it's Kate and the boys. Kate and the boys. <laughs> uh, the second night will be, it's, it's, it's kind of girls' night. The second night, NS is back. Uh, Shannon Beckner, Zoe Palmer, and Amanda Bruegel will be on Saturday. Well, that won't Q&As. be any fun. Yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> single one of those people. Like, yeah, we probably, pretty pretty we probably don't yeah. want to host that one. Uh, and mm-hmm. then the last night, Sunday night, is, oh, God, I'm going to get this wrong. I think it's Mimi, Mary, Dave Tampa, and Polly Moose is back, wow. I think, on cool. Sunday. So those are those are the lineups currently, and I need to post those. So yeah. you guys remind me after. <laughs> Thank you. We could totally host that shit. Yeah. So that's, that's how we. Talk. So that's our opening weekend. So that'll be fun. So it'll be yeah, fun Q and A's. Some of the some of them. It's been fun. Like we had uh, a really good festival run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, you've been posting like some really good reviews that you guys have been. We've been getting some really good reviews so far, and we have a lot more coming up. But that's just the people that have been doing early reviews. Yeah. yeah. Like we had a good press screening that went well. So we and we have. We didn't uh, go to a press screening. You've no. already seen the movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Although my review did not even touch on anything because I didn't want to spoil anything. It's true. It's true. That's true. But, uh, and then um, Peter and Amanda Ron Strombo tonight. Oh, nice. sweet. It'll be airing next week, though. Cool. So on the 4th. So by the time you get this up, it'll probably be, you can probably watch it online somewhere. Hopefully. Yeah. I would think. That's cool. Yeah, so we've been doing well. we got a lot of publicity coming up, and that's been fun. And so the word's getting out. That's the biggest thing is they get yeah. the word out, and then people can decide if they want to see it or not. Sure. So. But yeah, but the fun thing about the Q&As are going to be this. Like some of the actors were able, to, and the, the nice thing about having a big cast is that some Pretty much one cast member came with us to each fe- festival yeah. or yeah. more. Yeah. And so it's been interesting doing Q&As with different cast members. It was like <laughs> Santa Barbara, Zoe, Shannon, and Amanda and Paul were there. Um, and then it was just variations from then. It was like Paul and Chris came to Sudbury and Jay Brazo. And Jay Brazo was in Huntsville with Mary. Oh, and Mary was in Sun- Sudbury as well. Yes. And then who came to... Edmonton, <laughs> Zoe and Chris were in Edmonton. Calgary, we didn't have any cast. It was just myself and Jen Lau. I remember those pictures. And <laughs> uh, and Whistler was Ennis. And, oh, God, I don't want to get it wrong. I think it was just Ennis came with us. <laughs> it's all kind of a blur. Ennis for sure. And Ennis for sure was there. No, I think <laughs> it was. I think Kate Hewlett was going to come, and then she got booked on a show. Because she's a whore. Because <laughs> she's a whore. <laughs> Working. Kate. Kate. Did I call Kate a whore? I remember calling the one that shocked me was Lauren Lee Smith because we didn't actually know her until she came in the room. <laughs> yeah, you can't call somebody like, yeah. <laughs> Lauren and I are Everybody else was like friends, and then but she laughed. So and we're still friends. So no, it's okay. <laughs> we're Twitter friends. I'm Lauren, trying to Lauren. stop her. We haven't, met, we haven't met in real life yet, but we we tweet back she's and forth. Lovely. And she's lovely. I imagine she is. Yeah. We need to cast her in like everything else for now. Like, there's a plan for that. <laughs> Who else were we talking about? We Leslie Hope. We Leslie have to have yeah, we need to cast Leslie. Who's Leslie Hope? Hope? Uh, I apologize, Leslie. She was Jack Bauer's wife on 24. Oh, well, I guess she's, yeah. <laughs> she's done a few things. But she, she died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, she was in last night. And Spoiler she was alert. Names, like Bruce Greenwood and Kiefer Sutherland. And, you know, my good friend Jason Priest. She's shoot, like, shooting the string right now. Uh, yeah. Guillermo Del Toro. Oh, well, she's doing okay. She doesn't need yeah, to work she's, yeah. she's doing just fine. She's doing fine. So, so she's saying, who the fuck is Jeremy Lawn? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're cool. <laughs> oh, we know who Jeremy Lawn is. That's important, brother. And you, you've got, like, this great movie with a great cast. Mm-hmm. And just from a writer's standpoint, mm. how do you juggle all those stories? 
to make them work in a film. From a writer's point of view. Yeah. Oh. How did I write the movie? Did you do it with In a drunken stupor. In, in a drunken stupor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm one of the few writers that, like, I enjoy my alcohol. Let's, you know, <laughs> but I don't, it's not like, Our I'm not, I'm not the cliche. In a pub. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Um, but it's not like I don't sit there with a drink and, yeah. uh, and, and write or like music or anything. Although I have been listening to music lately as I've been writing. Hmm. Um, and it's the Garden State soundtrack. For some exactly. reason, I can, I can listen to that and write. Right. Um, and mostly it's like when I'm doing outlines and that kind of stuff. Because I've been, I'm in development on a sh bunch of stuff right now. So I've just been like yeah, putting that in the background. Like wow. <laughs> and, the, and then also like the soundtrack to the musical Matilda I've been listening to for some strange reason. Wow. Huh. That was one amazing song that I love. It's called When I Grow Up. Google it. It's yeah. it's really a, a lovely little song. I don't have to worry about that because it's not, not ever gonna happen. <laughs> really? <laughs> what, I am never gonna grow up. Is oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no. not that I'll never so you're never gonna watch it, Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. Yeah. Fuck you. Don't. Don't. <laughs> now who's dead inside? Yeah. <laughs> um. So how do I how how do you write something like that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, how the whole movie came about. I'm sure anyone that follows this has heard the story a million times now. But um is I, I cast the movie more or less for the entire movie and then I wrote it. There was a couple parts I hadn't cast just because I didn't wasn't I didn't know the actors well enough to just get them to blindly trust <laughs> yeah. me. So uh, so I did a draft. Knowing who I wanted though already. Right. Yeah. And then um, so so what I did is I kinda wrote up a a short list of, of characters and then sent that out to the cast with, it was like a three page document. The first um, page was kind of a synopsis of the storylines and the idea. The second was um, kind of a, a laundry, a list of kind of how we were gonna do it, mm -hmm. how it was gonna work. Um, you know, most people only need four or five days over the course of the summer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then the last one was this list of rules, <laughs> which was meant to scare people off. Um, <laughs> And, and and also be a, so we can go back and make, we told you this would be a terrible situation where you wouldn't be you know you're not gonna be paid paid properly you're not gonna be you know we fed properly potentially you're gonna have to wear your own clothes uh, at that point we were gonna make people do their own makeup but we changed that because that's mean well especially some people just don't know how to do makeup and that's yeah. something you don't want to do wrong yeah. uh, and you know stuff like you know usually actors have like a quarters they can go to when they're not on. But we're like, we will try to provide that for you, but depending on where we're shooting, we may not have that. <laughs> no. You could go sit in the car. Yeah, well, as I said, it's like we'll, we'll do our best to provide that. Like when we yeah. shot, there's this sequence that takes place at a, at the, a farmhouse. So it's like, you know, we had like bedrooms in that yeah. place. So mm -hmm. people had their own spaces there. But, you know, we shot in... Um, where was it? Shot in the park? Shot in the park and that yeah. kind of stuff. It's like you're not going to have an area to go off and be private. So, uh, so if that's important to you, and you can't work without that, then this is probably not the project for you. So there's a lot of stuff like that, and I, and I kind of modified it. If you go online and you Google um, "full frontal" Steven Soderbergh movie rules, it was kind of I took a lot of those and just modified it for what we were doing. Because yeah. he did the same thing when he made that movie. He set a list of rules that <laughs> was meant to scare people off who weren't up for playing. Or <laughs> playing. Um, so that was ins inspired that. So then, so yeah, so then people ever like, and the only. Only one person didn't do didn't come on board, and that was mostly because of scheduling, oh. I think. Or at least that's what they said. <laughs> um, they won't return his calls. They won't return yeah. my calls. Yeah. Well, it, hasn't, it wasn't someone I had worked with before, so it was kind of a shot in the dark. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you off camera, but I'm not going to do it on camera. Oh, of course not. Uh, Although I do like the story that uh, Christian Hahn was going to play the, the sex therapist, and then something changed there. And then Gordon Pinson ended up that's playing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And he's perfect in it. Yeah, Christine says that that happened on purpose. That was that was just a fortuitous thing where, um, what happened? Uh, Christine wasn't available to do it because of a scheduling thing, and so we and we were about a week away. And I had just uh, happened to have hung out with Gordon for like a good part of a day, just like literally days before we we found it <laughs> out. Because um, Peter Callahan had said wonderful things about his experience shooting the movie, and so Gordon called me out of the blue. Wow! Um, and invited me over to his place for coffee, so we hung out and just nerded out. It was that was a fun <laughs> day. Um, and and then yeah, and I took a, a a risk and gave him a shout and asked him if he'd come and play with mm -hmm. us for a half a day, and he did, and it was great. And he makes such a difference. It's mm -hmm. like I mean, Christine would have been great in that part. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. But he makes it like a fairy tale. Yeah. You know? Like I mean, his voice is just. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, it's one of those voices that, yeah. especially, you know, if you're going to open your film and the first thing you see is Gordon Pinson, you're starting off well. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? and, the, and the last thing you hear is Gordon Pinson, you're doing, you're doing okay, too. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that's so, so, yeah, so Gordon wasn't one of the people we had on board initially. Um, and then, so, everyone signed on, and then I did a draft pretty quickly. Got it out to everyone. Like, we, you know, I had the concept. To, I, I decided I wanted to do it on January 24th of that year, and then we were shooting in May. So yeah. everything, everything came together pretty quickly. Uh, and we started, we were doing the crowdfunding campaign, I think, in f- February it started? Yeah. February, yeah, March? Like it was then around there. Yeah. So, uh, so everything, you know, so still writing as that was happening. And then, so yeah, so I mean, I got a draft out really quickly and sent it out to the cast, and then we kind of workshopped it back and forth. And ha- I mean, yeah. usually you would spend that time just rewriting yourself, getting notes from other writers or whoever else your, your kind of inner circle is. Uh, but instead of doing that, I just workshopped with the cast and just yeah. and, and used them. As, well, and, and for me, it was like they're going to put more thought into all these characters than anyone else ever would mm-hmm. because yeah. they're going to be playing yeah. them. So it was a really, really great situation and a unique situation to kind of do that in. And also, you know, it, w- it was a way of, like, finding those characters. So by the time we went to shoot, like, we knew exactly what mm-hmm. those characters were. So there was a real shorthand um, between myself and the cast or nothing. They, they just knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the process of writing that many characters and stories, I mean, I knew who was going to be playing the parts. Right. So for me, that's easy because I can just picture them, you know. I, I, I have a, a knack for that. I can imitate well. Yeah. Um, like voice patterns and that <laughs> kind of stuff. So that's something... And it's actually something I'm surprised more people can't do. Like, whenever someone asks me how I do that, it's like, well, it seems that's the easy part for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Is just having voices in my head yeah. and spewing them out. Um, and then in terms of just juggling, you mean, do you mean in terms of, like, when do we cut to this story? How do you find yeah. this and that? How do you know? Um, I mean, I made sure every storyline had its own arc. And so I knew what those were going to be. Mm-hmm. And, and then, I mean, the nice thing about doing an ensemble is that there's, not, there's no filler. Right. I mean, yeah. every single scene is a turning point <laughs> yeah. for every character, right? So, that, so in a lot of ways, it was kind of easier to write that um, because you're really just writing big moments between characters. Yeah. And then there's a lot That's of true. stuff that happens in between that you don't get to see and that mm-hmm. you can kind of imagine happening. That's true. You know, like we don't see – we disappear from some Zoe Palmer's character storyline for a bit, but then she's sitting in her mom's group and you hear her talking about her exploits, and so it kind of fills in, yeah. fills in the time in between of what she's been up to, right? And that kind of stuff. So in a, in a way, it's kind of easier. And then it's just a matter of, I mean, I'm, I'm an editor as well. Like, that's kind of my background. So mm-hmm. in terms of figuring out where the pacing is, that's just part of that. Like, that's one of the <laughs> things that's easier that's for me. Do. That's cool. It's kind of what I do. Yeah. Um, and then, and we didn't shift a lot in, in when we were actually editing. I think there's a couple scenes we moved around after the fact. But that's also the beauty of doing like an ensemble film, mm-hmm. it's kind of an yeah. anthology film, but not yeah. really. Yeah, is you can. You've got the pieces. You can move the pieces yeah. around somewhat, as long as you don't change the chronological order of each storyline. Yeah. yeah, you can kind of move things around a little bit. Like I think um, there's a, an infamous sex scene between Peter Callahan and, and Amanda Bruegel that I think <laughs> that's the only real thing that we either moved up or put a little bit later. Um, and I can't remember why. It's just for something when we were watching it was like the flow. I'm like, that should go there now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but other than that, everything, the order of everything, pretty much stayed the same way as we had scripted it. Was uh, Christine's role that she ended up playing always going to be in there, or did you just want to add that her in the film? No, <laughs> there was that was what was the thing when Christine couldn't do it. Um, we hadn't cast that part yet. Oh, okay. Um, and initially, it was going to be two separate people. Mm-hmm. So it was going to be like okay, yeah. uh, someone Chris is on a date with or Gage, the character Gage is on a date with earlier in the film and then later on he's on a different date with somebody else. Um, and we hadn't cast that part yet because we were, hadn't got. I mean the other way, we, we shot the movie um, for 15 days but over the course of three and a half months. So we were still kind of, uh, there was other beauty of, that I didn't have to have the script perfect when we started right. shooting it. Yeah. I could keep on rewriting knowing that. I was like well, we're not shooting those scenes until August <laughs> so I can kind of put that off. <laughs> and, ju- and really just focus on what we're working on right now. Yeah. Or, or coming up to. And so we hadn't cast, and that part we weren't shooting until whenever we shot that li- later on. So we had that time, and I was just like, well, we'll cast someone, we'll figure it out. It's, mm-hmm. And it was also, you know, a part that's not delicate <laughs> either. Yeah. I don't, we sure. So <coughs> I was like, who do we get? And then, 
So when Christine couldn't do it, I said, well, I said, you know, there's one other part that we haven't cast yet. <laughs> I said, it's actually two parts, but I said, if you were to do it, I'd combine them together and we'd rewrite it and make that and make that work. And that'd be actually funnier if it's, there's a callback to it. I said, but you might not, you probably don't want to do it. You know? <laughs> Let me just, you know, and, and she'd already read the script. So I, I you know, so she, um, she read it and I don't want to give it away. Uh, and and was actually was okay with it was totally comfortable doing it because she knew it was going to be myself yeah and she did yeah. it with Chris so and with Chris so she yeah. was comfortable doing that because she was comfortable with us and she knew that we'd do it delicately and that kind of stuff uh, but also because I mean the script and the script that was written as like hot young thing or something was the name of the character and she just came back and was like can I can we do something different with it can and, and you know ended up like the the reference point was Lil, Lilith Crane from Cheers and Frasier. <laughs> And I was like, that's awesome. amazing. I was like, done. So we'll do that. So, that, and I think Christine really enjoyed the fact yeah. that, that we were up for kind of playing with it to that degree. It makes it so much better. It's so awesome. Yeah. It's so much better than if it just been some young bimbo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Christine Horn. Yeah. It's tiny a tiny part, part, but so great. Right? Well, that's just, it's like we don't have. Um, like there's there's a couple of small parts of the movie, but they're all everyone stands out. Yeah, everyone yeah. really has a little moment that really oh, totally. lets them shine. Like <coughs> Dave Tampa has this great little scene near the end of the film sequence with Zoe. Yeah, Gordon's you know got a little bit. Kate, uh, not Kate, uh, Kristen Booth, you know. Yeah. Well, she's sprinkled throughout. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's got their shine. Judy Bowen. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I both I think both Sue and I agreed on is the whole nobody's going to be interested in Amanda Bruegel anymore. <laughs> Interested? Yeah, well, the whole like, at all whole, like Peter Kellen yeah, as a person, Peter yeah. like or turned sexually, off by her, yeah. we're like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I was oh, watching the that kind of he's like not attracted to her at all, and I'm like, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I hadn't even met her yet, and I was. <laughs> and you were attracted to her. <laughs> it's different, though. You know what I mean? Here's the thing: it's just like it's like that old. There's an old saying that no matter how hot a girl is, there's always somebody out there who's sick of fucking her. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that yeah, idea yes. that you just, after a while, it's the luster fades. It, go, it disappears. It turns yeah. into, hopefully, it turns into something richer and better. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, often it doesn't. And that's yeah, why she's standing there holding a baby. He's, like, turned off by that now. <laughs> well, I just did. I mean, they didn't plan to have kids. She's she wearing like, we're, we're getting into spoiler territory now. Yeah. That's fine. So, if you're listening a warning now, there. we're going to get into spoiler yeah. territory. It's called sex after kid. Well, so. yeah, we are getting that's into it. No, we're good. That's fine. <laughs> so, if you've watched kid. up to this point <clears throat> and you haven't seen it yet, we're just going to talk about whatever we want to now. Yeah. <laughs> so hold so on. It's your fault if it's spoiled for you. <laughs> Don't say we didn't warn you. We've been warned now. Spoilers, <laughs> spoilers <laughs> coming spoilers out. Ahead. So, yeah, so I mean, th yeah. their storyline is that they've been married for however long. Yeah. And, and they were not planning on having kids. And they did by accident. And, you know, her transformation is coming to accept that and embrace it by the end. And his yeah. goes the opposite yeah. way. Yeah. Which happens. Which yes. happens. You know, I didn't want every... It's funny, because it's like I didn't want every story to end on such a happy no. note. Yeah. But at the same time, I think because of that, that story does end on a happy note. Yeah. Well, right? she's got her life together, that's for sure. It's or thing. she's on her way to getting her life together. Yeah. yeah. Like it's she's, ending for her. Yeah. yeah, so in a way, it is a happy... It's still a happy ending. Yeah. It's because she's made that choice, yeah. and she's yeah. not going to accept a relationship that's just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Callahan's such a dick. A dick. He's so dick. good in it. Yeah. He's so good. So, yeah. He's pretty awesome. <clears throat> I'm looking at the poster with him his lipstick stain. Yep. <laughs> but it's a fantastic cast, and I love it. I yeah, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Katie Bowen, of course. You announced the adorable. cast on our show. I did announce right. most of them. Yeah, yeah. most of them. We had most of them signed on at that point. Yeah. And we didn't have Peter yet. Um, I'm just looking at the board. Who didn't we have yet? Peter, we didn't have yet. We probably didn't have Mimi yet. By the time we first I loved Mimi. Gordon. Yeah. Right. She was like one of my her her storyline her character were one of my favorites yeah. in it actually. The older couple gets a lot of good play. They sure do. They love it. It was a lot of fun. What's yeah. been one of my favorite things yeah. about going to the film festivals is we always get a really decent amount of like elderly people coming to the screenings. Really? And they lose their minds. <laughs> in, in Sudbury, there was this like 85 year old woman with a walker. She was clinging to the walker, laughing her ass off. And that was like probably one of my favorite memories of my entire life. That's wicked. Yeah, that made me really happy. And then in the restroom after, I had an old man pat me on the bum 
<laughs> and thank me for it and told me that he was going to go home and screw the heck out of his wife. <laughs> or at least try to. Or at least like, try to. And of course, and you go and you tell people that, that story that would just happen and they all think you're full of shit. Like Chris and Paul did not believe me. I was like, that just happened to me. I swear that just happened to me. I made an old man feel comfortable <clears throat> enough to grope me. That was another Dad's I don't know if they posted the Q&A from Sudbury, but there was one, this older couple, not older, they were not that old, actually. They were, like, probably in there. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, I was just I, thinking that. <laughs> no, 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 but they were, like, oh, it's hard to say the light. I'm not going to say how old they were. But it was, like, you know, a not young couple, a not old couple, like uh, somewhere in the middle. Um Stood up and wanted to, and Paul and Chris were, of course, standing right beside each other and wanted to thank them for, of course, on Lost Girl. They said, you single-handedly have improved our sex life because we watch you and we get turned on and we go. And, of course, Paul decided, I hope you're talking about him. <laughs> because if it's me, it's a bit creepy. <laughs> but we had, like, some people, that's the fun thing about the Q&As. It's like if the audience gets into it and is willing to open up and stuff like yeah. that, they're so much fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah. That's I can see oh, Paul, Paul saying that. <laughs> Paul's delightful. He's a hoot. We need to have him back on the show soon. But yeah, I, I mean, it. you literally had uh, the entire cast like pretty much picked in your head before you went and shot. And yeah, we, we were yeah. cast before we were. Well, we had them before we shot because yeah, otherwise we wouldn't <laughs> be a big empty frame. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we had them before we before we wrote, and so that was so that was it was great was that collaborative process, mm -hmm. and I think that was what was partially exciting for some of the cast. Was knowing that they were going to have a lot of input, yeah, oh, and that I was going to force well, them to have a, a lot yeah, of that's input. That's really appealing to some people. Yeah, I think so. I think, but I think they're also not necessarily used to it. So I think it took a little while for some of them to get used to it mm -hmm. because they're yeah. used to just being, you know, treated like puppets. Like, go stand here and do this, do that. Right. Um, and so I think they found that really, really liberating to being able to have a little more flexibility and control. That's cool. Um, yeah, but it was great. I mean, we had so many great sessions. Like, I mean, like Kate and, and Mary and I spent like a whole afternoon one day. Kind of like there's the story that changed the most between like the first. I draft. like their story, but that might just be because I like Kate and Mary. Yeah. Yeah. So. But their story changed significantly Make because it was meant to. It was written to be a lot more comedy heavy. Um, but then after the first reading, we just sat down and was like, well, "Why don't we make it something different?" Yeah. You know, we don't mm -hmm. need that for every single storyline. And yeah. so we just sat down and we just started talking about what's their backstory, where did they come from, yeah. um, and created what's in there now, which I think is so much better. Yeah. Um, but that's the same as all of them. Yeah. I mean, the first draft is, is a first draft. First drafts are always terrible. Um, and so... <laughs> no, so we to go back to after. <laughs> no, but it was great having, you know, essentially like, you know, 15, 17 co-writers um, in, in, in a way to be able yeah. to bounce stuff mm -hmm. off of and, and really, really help inform things. And you know, it was great. It was, really, it was a really great process. And it's hard to do that when you're working inside the system because once, you know, because you, you can't get like telephone money or Greenberg money, all that kind of stuff unless like, so you have a script. Right. You know? So it's, you know, unless you can find some benefactor who's just going <laughs> to throw you money and be like, make something awesome and come back. Um, I don't know what, when I'll ever be able to do that again. Yeah. Unless we do something super yeah. low budget again, in which case we can. But it's just, you know, it's it's hard to do that <laughs> over and over again because you start burning your favors. I yeah. know. I remember that phone call with the, with the money phone call because you called me, called my phone at work. And the uh, yeah, and, oh. you and you said, I just got out of this meeting with this guy and he's going to come on as executive That's producer. And, and, and literally, which is why I, literally why I thought you were calling me, just to tell me that story. Oh. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. That's great. He's like, yeah, but he wants to talk to you guys too. I'm like, why would he want to talk to us? Unless like, Smithy TV. Yeah. It's true. That's why we're all but here. Yeah, that's just, right. So it could happen again. Totally. We'll see. I mean, I think... throw money at you. Not yet. Maybe. <laughs> oh, well, then. Crowdfunding went really well for Crowdfunding went well. And, and, I'm, and I'm not against doing crowdfunding <laughs> again. I want to make sure it's for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. and it's, mm -hmm. for, it's just because it's tough to do. It takes, right. it takes a lot out of you. And you can only wear squirrel suits so often, right? You can wear squirrel suits. <laughs> Chipmunk suits. Chipmunk suits. Chipmunk suit. Yeah, Sue. 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 Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's tough. And there's been a lot of, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because we, I mean, hit the crowdfunding right before... Everyone? <laughs> Every, well, it was just we got in at the right is, time. Yeah, yeah. You for sure. Before, 
what I would call like crowdfunding fatigue, where all of a sudden, once a week or more, yeah. you're being bombarded with people saying, oh, we're doing this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you only have so much extra money you can throw at stuff to begin with. But also, I mean, I got emails for a long time, at least once a week or so, and I still get them from people asking me, can I kind of help out with their campaign kind of look at them kind of and usually it's by the time they've already launched and I'm like it's too late you're already <laughs> fucked up <laughs> um, because you've got to go in with your guns blazing like you have to go in on day one yeah with a full assault and have things planned all the way along where a lot of people can, I go to pages there's no video it's like you at least need like yeah. a selfie yeah. saying hey I'm so and so and this yeah. is what I'm doing you, yeah like, and then just keep adding at the very least you need to start with that on day one if you don't have that <laughs> You know, it's like yeah. you're not like, oh, well, maybe we'll add one. I'm like, it's too late. Yeah, you're Fuck. already lost it. <laughs> you already screwed it up. And, th- and, that, and I think that's what it is. I think people look at, like, what we did and what other people have done. And they go, oh, that must that looks so easy. It's like, but there's a reason <laughs> some people are successful with crowdfunding and some yeah. people aren't at all. I think, and that happened with the celebrity thing, too. I think like, the Veronica Mars people came and just were, like, an onslaught. Yeah. Um, and then it was followed up by Zach Braff, and then you had people like Melissa Joan Hart, who I think just went up there and thought that it would be like that, yeah. and she made, I think, like $50,000 of the $2 million she was looking for or something. Mm-hmm. Um, don't quote me on the figure. But I think... <laughs> I'd take it. But I think it was just because she thought that they didn't put that much mm-hmm. yeah. thought in, and yeah. she I'll didn't really... Online and yeah, and, and because of my... People will want to know do it because they want to know what I'm up to, yeah. right? But I think, and it's funny, I think I, I've, I've had a lot of like really heated arguments hmm. with people saying that it's like, um, you know, Zach Braff doesn't have any right to go ask for private money. Yeah, oh, they have no problem with the Veronica Mars campaign, which was really run by Warner Brothers in a weird <laughs> way. It's yeah. like, we would have no problem giving a studio $5.7 million yeah. to make a movie they could have funded themselves with a property they own. We have no problem with that. Yeah. But Zach Braff was making an indie film. Fuck that guy. <laughs> like really? Like that's who you're gonna shit on? You know, not not the not the Veronica Mars studio, people that have Brand, like a built-in yeah. franchise and audience. Because yeah. um, that's it. Like Warner Brothers is taking that 5.7 million dollars and throwing it into their marketing fund. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And, and using it to pay for. And that's fine. That's fine too. I mean, here's the thing that I think. And, and Spike Lee came on board and he got a lot of shit for what he did. Um, and I and and he it was interesting watching his. Did you guys follow those at all? I followed the Zach Braff one. Yeah. The Spike one was interesting because he was getting a lot of. I mean, I don't need to bore people with it, but he was just getting a lot of flack back and forward. And and I contributed just a little bit to that campaign because I wanted his updates, which are crazy. <laughs> like the man writes, <laughs> random words would be capitalized, and it always ends in you dig show enough. It's like they're all. It's just bizarre. So I think I paid like five bucks to make sure I got like the, like the updates. Um, <laughs> and, and, but at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody going and getting crowdfunding money, especially if you're a celebrity, because what you're doing is you're, and there's, st- I mean, they've talked about this a lot, there's statistics to prove it. Mm-hmm. I mean, those people brought, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of new people to crowdfunding that weren't there before yeah. Yeah. because of their fan bases, right? And, and I think... They did a statistic that since Veronica Mars, um, all the new people, because they can track all that, yeah. all the new people that have joined crowdfunding, had have new accounts since then, have pledged to over 6,000 movies. Wow. Damn. So those are people that might not have before. Well, that's yeah. it. Those people that might not have before, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So the argument is that, why wouldn't you? And also, I mean, I think there's this mentality that it's like, well, if you give money to Zach Braff, it's like, well, that's money that should go to her. As if there's, like, an, a, an, an end it's supply of money. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, no, you can give money to both. It's like, there's no end to crowdfunding dollars. You can yeah. pledge to both. So it's not like, you know, for example, in, in Telefilm Canada, where they have a set amount of money they're able to give away each year. And after a couple months, when they open their doors in the spring, the money depletes and they're out yeah. of money. Mm-hmm. That happens. But in crowdfunding, it doesn't. It's mm-hmm. like... There's money there if people want to give money. It's yeah. like it's, it's, it's plus perks are cool. That's they give you stuff that you would never have the chance to get before. That's like true. You, you, we got to name a, mo- a character in your film, yeah. or we got to go to the cast and crew screening, yeah. stuff like that. Like that's the truth. I have a, I um I'm, I wrote a, an article for the Huffington Post that's going to come out I think next week. Cool. Um and it's like crowdfunding tips, and that's one of the things that I mentioned was the idea that it's like you're not y- when you're crowdfunding you don't ask for money. 
Right. Um, even though that's the most obvious thing. It's like thing. a trade. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a trade. It yeah. is, and the idea isn't that it's like. I mean, first of all, no one wants to be asked for their money. No. I mean, it's, it comes off as begging. It sounds yeah. desperate. Yeah. You don't. It's not comfortable for you to do, and it's awkward for people to have done to them. So the trick is you. It's a, it is a trade. You're, what you're doing is you're offering them a chance to be become part of something exclusive mm-hmm. yeah. that they don't have a chance to otherwise. Yeah. And for that, get my name in the credits. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And for you that, know? people are willing to trade, you know, yeah. monetar- monetarily funds. Totally. To be able to be part of that, right? But you're offering something that they want or can't get, right? Yeah. And that's why people do it. Yeah. And and then, but if you don't do it properly and your perks are terrible, then people feel like they're just donating money for nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. You I'm not giving you twenty five dollars for a thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but even so, like just like watching, like I've done, a, a, I did a, like a, a a panel for Indiegogo when they were in town. Yes, last. I remember. Uh, uh, it wasn't the screenwriters thing, was it? It was no, no, no. It was just they did it at the at the Drake, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was just yeah, an Indiegogo. Yeah. Like they do a, a couple yeah. an evening cool. when they were in town. Yeah. yeah, and so I was on the panel with the guys that did the Todd and the Book of Pure Evil campaign mm-hmm. right. and the Pure Pawnage guys, and I learned a ton from those guys too. Of just other little trips and tick, trips and ticks, <laughs> tri- tricks and tips that I would take with me on the next one. Yeah, uh, and that's just the other thing too is like you just there's every one time I mean because w- I did a lot of research going into it, but there's still so much that I've seen now that I think I could do even better next time, knowing yeah. kind of how to plan and attack and just do it in just such a way. I mean, I mean the be- beauty part is with this one is like he, the, the title alone has a built-in. Yeah. So that's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Um, not just coming up with something because the title will get people interested. <laughs> what? So we'll see. But yeah, I think, I mean, so who knows? So maybe that would be the trick is next time I want to do something that's super collaborative like that. Mm-hmm. Is that that's what the crowdfunding campaign will come in. Yeah. I like that. Well, especially the fact that you said collaborative because, yeah, I mean, it works for this. Definitely worked for Shabbat, Paul Shepard. Yeah, that was. L- I mean, that was less just more so because the ca- the script I worked on year for mm-hmm. years, and yeah. then finally got the money, and so we didn't really. It was already the script was kind of done, mm-hmm. and then we you know we played and that kind of yeah. stuff, but there wasn't it wasn't like this at all. No, um, like this was pure collaboration. <laughs> um, like there was this is like here's the skeleton. Yeah. Well, that's just Let's it because it all came together so quick because the cast came on board like right from the gate. Yeah. So you know that time you would normally spend, like I said developing the script on your own Mm -hmm. or with like your story editor friends or whoever else um i just did with the cast instead which is so cool yeah Yeah, which is cool but like i said it's hard to do when you're doing it through the traditional funding methods yeah that we have in canada just because they need to they want to see the scripts unless you're lucky enough to be friends with actors and you know i have another project i'm working on with somebody (laughs) that we're kind of surprised something (laughs) similar um and we, but we're also going to go through the traditional methods, but we just were hmm. bringing on people earlier on, I think, on some of the parts. We're still working that out. I don't want to give away. I'm, like, I'm just being vague. I'm stuck, I'll stop being an asshole now. Yeah. Um, you want to vague that up for us a bit? I so, yeah, so now that I thought about it, I am kind of hoping to do a project similar. Yeah. But not, but not like, we're working up and shooting it right away. I think we'll, we'll workshop it and then get the funding after the script's done and then hopefully people can still let me know. Cause yeah, because I don't think there was a missed beat or missed opportunity in that entire film. No, we cut them out. <laughs> All the stuff that sucked, we cut out, which wasn't See, much. Which doesn't well, it wasn't have even sucked. It's just yeah. like just things. It's interesting. I mean, the editing process is interesting. It's like writing another draft, yeah. especially once you have the actors. It's like you realize how little you need because they'll do so much just mm-hmm. on their own with their faces or whatever it is, right? I mean, that's the beauty of a good cast is they realize how you they show you how bad of a writer you are. Yeah. <laughs> because they can sh- they can do so much more than mm-hmm. you can do, right? And you start crossing off terrible. That's <laughs> line. terrible. You get rid of it, right? And you wander around thinking, I'm a terrible writer. I suck. I do that anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've never done that. Oh, what a terrible... Wow. <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, I think somebody was supposed to have read your book by now from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. I we saw, I'm that. such a shitty person. <laughs> I was just cleaning out my like my. It's in my. Here's the. Do you have a hot? I, I'm like from the '80s, so I have hot mail. Still. Yes, as do I. Oh, good for you. Me so too. you know. So here's the worst part, though. So like, so you know the flags. Yeah. Love it when that's interesting. I'm like, I'll just flag stuff, and it'll go up there, and it'll always be there, and I'll always check back and notice. But I'm like, yeah, until you've got like. Yeah, until you 80. have 30 of them. And you're like, I was going through my flags, like ah, Sue's book is like, I, she has a, probably has another draft. I went like, uh. do you have a new draft? <laughs> is it the same draft? Last one you sent. I should check in. Yeah. 
I'm such a <laughs> shitty person. It's I, I think it's the same one because I've been working on my other one for the Amazon Breakthrough Novel mm. Awards. And I owe you a read. I really, really do. Yeah, yeah you know I do. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then I've started the what mining one. Plus, I've got like a little story idea in development. You never even sent me anything, so that's your own. I used to want to read my first one. You didn't. I this one you might. <laughs> send me, send me, send me yeah. a pitch. So. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I've got a great pitch. Almost. Almost. <laughs> I've almost got a great almost pitch. Almost got the pitch. So can we move on from making me feel guilty about not reading That's why I brought it up. <laughs> Fair. It's been I like over a year. I still this day of uh, Ennis running down the street, running home. <laughs> when he's like, it's a good I'm scene. not even near my house. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> that just still tickles my funny bone. Like, to Ennis will never watch it's this. Such a great so I'll tell you the story. Ennis will never watch this. He might. Thanks a lot, Ennis. He'll never get this far. We'll see if <laughs> you're going to be on the show. Yeah, yes. that's true. He's a, he's a single child. He'll, he's okay he's with that. ADD. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's never going to stay. We anymore. did five takes of that. We didn't roll camera until take three. <laughs> Because he had to be like, he, he had, had to, to be, be totally weird. Yeah, that's he had awesome. to be like a little further on from where he should have been. So a little more desperate. A little more desperate. A little more. That's awesome. And he was pissing me off that day. So no. We didn't roll until. That's wicked. <laughs> we might have. Uh, we, I think. Well, you know what it was. It was also like there's a lot of focus pulling, right? So I think we might have rolled yeah. on the second one, but we, it was like a tech thing. <laughs> that's cool. So See, those are the stories I like. Is a little behind. I don't scenes think he'll ever. Like and he'll be okay with that now. Yeah. yeah, now. A year and a half, two years later. <laughs> now he'll be okay with that. If I'd have told him on that day, he would have been a little. He would have gone to his non existent trailer. <laughs> he would have yeah. gone, gone into my basement <laughs> and sat on my, my child's couch yeah. and refused to come up. Speaking of which, yeah. Everyone's in this. And Annie. Yeah. Both of my both kids are in this. Yeah. 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 Who was it? That He's not actor. Had, like, Come on. Oh uh, no, but you can. Uh, they actually they are now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, kind of. It's did like you get they can get. Consent? <laughs> they, I did. <laughs> it's. It, I mean, I can tell that story. But how, how do you get kids to be in a movie? I mean, part of it. So we did this movie under what's called TIP, which is stands for Toronto Independent Production. Okay. Um, and that's a, a, a very special thing inside of Actro. Which only works inside of Toronto, I think, where you can get actor members for you know a very low budget. And depending on your budget, um, there's two different tiers of tip, and we were the lowest. Mm -hmm. And so you get the actors for like $140 a day, where scale is usually, I think, around $700. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. And then most, I mean, if you're on a TV series and you're a regular, you're getting more than scale, too, mm -hmm. right? So it's like that's what you would get as you feel like a day player. Uh -huh. like, uh, like a movie or a TV show, right? It's a lot, but when you think about it, you also have to realize that it's like they're not working every day. <laughs> well, that's true. Right? It's like yeah. actors don't work yeah, 12, 12 months a year, right? Yeah, so it's like... They're lucky to work three or four. Yeah, they're, working, uh, they're yeah. really lucky if they're working three or four. So it's like you get paid extra because you're spending a lot of that time auditioning, which you don't get paid for. Although yeah. you do get paid for callbacks, depending on, oh, cool. on, how the, on how many you've done and that kind of stuff. So that's the thing. is like, you know, you get paid a lot more, your daily rate, but that's because you're not working all the time. Yeah. And it, and it kind of balances out. It's the same as most jobs in the film industry. It's like it's an editor, like my daily rate's pretty good. Mm -hmm. If I was working a year, an entire year, I'm going to have a really good year. But it's right. like usually you have a month or two off where you're in between <laughs> yeah. gigs. Mm -hmm. And so, but it, you know, in theory, it all balances out with That's how that works. So anyway, so blah, 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 tip, tip. Yeah, so, um, but to be able to be part of a tip project, you have to be a full actor member. Because there's right. tiers, like you can you can be an apprentice mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And what what usually happens on a normal film is if you are not an actor member, the production can just uh, permit you, where they pay like a fee, right. and then you can be in it because they permitted you. You can't permit people on a, on a tip film um, because the whole point of, of tip projects is is meant to ex bring in people that ne aren't necessarily working all the time, or to give right. people you know people that are full members. Something you know, because a lot of the people end up just being on like you know one line persons on American films or American TV yeah. shows mm -hmm. that you hear, right? So it's a chance a lot of actors have a little bit more to do, so they don't let you permit. It was also I think they used to let you do that, but then people took advantage of it. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> as people as are want, do. as people do. So, but the problem is, how do you find a six month old that is full actor member? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it don't exist. We looked. <laughs> um, 
We yeah, we look, we had to look. That was yeah. so what so what you have to do is when you're using kids is you have to either if you need something really specific. You can do this with other parts too. Like if you for some reason need uh, a person that is paraplegic and speaks with it is full Jamaican. And it's like if you can't if you can prove that you can't find that within their union, mm-hmm. you and you have someone else, you can potentially they'll make an exception for some things that are very specific like that. Right. I think. Uh, and so kids fall into that kind of thing. So there are actor kids, but usually it's hard to find any that are under two mm-hmm. because it just, you have to have so many credits to be able to become a full member. Gotcha. Um, but the problem is you go in and you have these meetings and, and you have to prove that you looked. So you have to go and talk to all the agencies that handle children and put out a casting breakdown and see what comes back. And we ended up, there are some kids in the movie that we, we did out of that. But the other thing we just said is, look, it's like for you know for Amanda's child, it's like who's going to be more comfortable, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, who's that kid going to be more, com- yeah. you know, that she's going to be comfortable with the child, the child's going to be comfortable with her. It's like, would you rather have someone else? He still looked like her at that point. Yeah, <laughs> and, and for that, it was like, as long as we had another, like, she had another caregiver, so it wasn't like she had to focus on her acting yeah. and taking care of the yeah. child. So like her mother came and, yep. and did that kind of thing, right? And so and for our kids, like my wife was there for our kids. <laughs> And the same with me. I'm like, as I, I'm going to use my own two children. I had a six month old. It's like you're not going to find a six month old actor member. And not only that, I know what she'll do. Like I know the kind of things that she'll be good at and she'll be comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know her trick. I know when she's going to be not in the mood anymore. Yeah. And unless it works for the scene, I won't make her cry. You know? <laughs> um, so that's the other thing too. Is like, you know, no one's going to be more protective of the, those children than me. Yeah. For that kind of stuff. So yeah. So that's how you get kids in a, in a low budget movie. It's not. It was tough. We, you know, we had a meeting specifically with actor about the kids. Wow. Uh, we yeah. had to, we had to go over that. But it's, but it's also, you know, we had a lot of meetings because there's also a lot of sex scenes in the movie, and you have to go. You literally have to write Special. out every single thing you want the actor to do. Right. Wow. And then they have to sign it. It goes to their agent and their agent, and they have to sign it. And that's for to protect you and them, mm-hmm. yeah. because that way, if they're not comfortable with something before, they can flag it then. Yeah. Um, but it also protects you because if they show up on set on the day and they're like, I don't want to do that, you're like, it's right here. It's <laughs> said right here. Yeah. You would. I mean, that's a shitty position to be in because yeah. now yeah. you're like, you feel like you're raping them. Because you're like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm asking you to do something you're not comfortable doing, but you said you would do it. Who is the asshole? Am I that? <laughs> so that never happened on this because, you know, one of my rules too with this was like, no one's going to ask me to do, do anything they're uncomfortable with because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not going to enjoy doing that. And they're not going to enjoy doing it. Yep. And, and the nice thing is, most people were willing to go further and push things further. I mean, you see, like you know, Amanda Bulo's character. She just decided. She said this in a, an interview we did last week, which I thought was amazing, where she said that when she made the movie, she decided to just tell her ego to go f itself. <laughs> and then, and that's how she got through it. Like you, normally she'd sit there going, "I look terrible in this," but you know, she she chose the lingerie she wears in the movie. So she knew she's what awesome. she was getting into. Yeah. That's just it. It was amazing. <laughs> right? I think she'll tell the story better than I do, but when she bought that piece, she went into a store, and she explained to this, the woman that was working there that she needed something really skanky, really this and that, something ill-fitting, blah, 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 blah. And they're going, and of course, she, you know, she went to a nice lingerie store, so it was like, you know, those kind of things are few and far between. Could she trust me poorly, please? But that's it. So they went around, they went around, and they couldn't really find anything. And Amanda held up this thing. She's like, this is perfect. And the woman was like, I own that. <laughs> I might tell the story wrong. If you ever talk to Amanda, get her to tell the story. Oh, I'm man. sure she'll tell better than I did. Yeah. And the and champagne think. bottle story. Champagne bottle story. Oh, you need to ask her about that, then. Because they when they were done shooting seed. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You do. It's funny as hell. <laughs> it really is. Well, but it's funnier if Corson tells it because it's oh all my from God, like yeah. his yeah. point of view. That's true. Okay, anyway. I'll get Corson to tell it because it's awesome. But yeah, so Sex After Kids opens at the Carlton. At the Carlton. February 7th. Get your pre-order tickets by going there or by emailing sexafterkids at gmail.com. Yeah, and it also it is also playing in Saskatoon, nice. Regina, Edmonton. And we're still working on, we're still finalizing some other cities like that might jump on. The coast. Yeah, we're working on it. It's like, it's it's tough. Um, Math. Because really, uh, you know, you're either in an independent cinema, which the Carlton is, or mm-hmm. you're in Cineplex. Yeah. 
Um, and the problem with Cineplex, and I hope I'm not upsetting Cineplex by saying this, but they have... We're not no, 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 but one of the rules is that they you can't do anything with the film for 100 days after you, you're in their theaters. Oh, yeah. Oh. Which means you can't go to VOD, all this kind of stuff, yeah. right? Which really, if you're a small film and you're trying to maximize your marketing exposure, yeah. you know, 100 days is what, like three months? Yeah. Okay. Three and a bit? That's a, that's a long time to not to like wait in Especially between. Especially for a small <laughs> film. Yeah, yeah so for a small film, it, it's really, really tough. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, and, you know, because we want to go to VOD and stuff like that in, in the spring. Mm. Um, <clears throat> which we're doing that. We'll do that here, and we're also doing that in the States, and we're releasing yeah. in other countries as well. Um, so there's that. But the, the other problem is that, um, you know, you're competing in Cineplex. You're really competing against the big American films. Yeah. And oftentimes... You know they're juggling their release dates. Yeah. So, more often than not, if you're screening with Cineplex, they won't tell you that you're screening there on Friday until Monday, which gives <sighs> you three days to promote your date, which <laughs> is is not for a small film. It's it's tough enough. Yeah. yeah. So you know for that reason alone, we decided that we'll we'll let's go for the independent cinemas. Yeah, but the problem with that is there's less and less and less. <laughs> yeah, of there's fewer of them every day. Right. And in Vancouver, I don't think there's any left. So we're, we're, we are talking to Cineplex about, about Vancouver, and so we're just deciding if that's going to work or not. Yeah, cool. Because um, <clears throat> I don't think there are any independent cinemas left there. And then, so it's just a matter of, we're just, you know, our, our amazing distributor, Indie Can Entertainment, is, ah, is yeah. Avi Feathergreen. <laughs> yeah. Happy brother. birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, happy it's birthday. not his birthday anymore when this airs. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> who is, you know, for a small film, is the best distributor you're ever going to have. He's gonna he's gonna work his ass yeah. off. He's gonna make sure you work your ass off. But a filmmaker should. Yeah. If you're making a small film, you have to work just as hard. Yeah. So he, you know, he's doing a kick-ass job of uh, <clears throat> of getting us out there. So Good. awesome, I'm happy. Because he's a whore. Because he's a whore. <laughs> sure, yeah, he's a whore. He's the best kind of whore. Exactly. <sighs> no response to that. <laughs> no response. <laughs> On that <laughs> note. <laughs> On that note, that would make like the fourth visit for you on the show, I think. Easily the fourth, at least, if not more than that. It's at least the fourth. Yeah. First two were in pubs. And you'd be like a, a permanent co host, but you've got your own show, so fuck it. My own show. Yeah. I haven't done it in a while. I haven't had time. Busy we're now. available if you need. Yeah. If you want to do that. <laughs> five five questions each? I don't know how that works. That's yeah. 15. People will not answer 15 <laughs> questions. <laughs> Won't happen. But yeah, Jeremy, man, thanks for coming in, and we haven't seen you in forever. Thanks for having we me. Need to in. Fix that. Yeah. yeah, more often. You know what the problem is? It's kids getting in the way. <laughs> my kids are getting in the way. I'll talk to my wife about. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> go to bed. I gotta go hang out for a while. No, they're just at the age where they're really awesome now too. Yeah. Yeah, they're both like super. I mean, they're, Jesus Christ, they've always been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is gonna watch this and be furious with me. But it's just like that age where that you just you you know you spend so much time giving to them and doing all yeah. this stuff and they, they're just they're like giving and they've been doing that for like a long time because the you know the little one's two now <laughs> and so she just a fired. drum playing maniac from <laughs> she's a little bit drum well that's came from our we got our, our son dr- a drum set for, for Christmas <laughs> and so she has decided that she of course anything he does she has to do of course, as well. yeah but she runs the show that one the second one <laughs> she's in charge of everything of course as they are yeah it's okay. So really good plan. <coughs> Seriously, that's what you're gonna end with, like yep. girl power. You're gonna give like a little Spice Girls B side there. Maybe? I agree with her. <laughs> I'm all for girl power, but I'm just <laughs> some kind of cliched. I'm just like, I, I got nothing. I just watched an awesome Murdoch Mysteries episode. There last you time are. I got the girl power on. I'm all for that. But yeah, Jerry, mate, so good to see you. It's Thanks, been forever. And soon, that's like two episodes this week already. We're just so knocking them out of the park. We're whores. We are (laughs) whores. And on that note, (laughs) I'm Tim. This is still Sue. I'm determined to end it on a horror note. And we've got Kaylee and Alicia behind the ops tonight doing their thing. Did you do the camera? Did they do the. Waving to the non existent camera camera now. now. Oh, it's gone? Yeah. The pervert cam? It's gone. The pervert cam. (laughs) It's gone. I think Lindsay broke it. As he's not to do. No. But yeah, so we will see you guys next time. Make sure uh, you check out our blog and follow us on the YouTube channel. Follow this guy on the YouTube channel, too. And, and uh, on Twitter, at Lalon Jeremy. That's right. It'll be on the screen. And of course, oh, there you go. get out to see Sex After Kids in your hometown if you can. If not, get in a bus, in a car, in a train, or a plane, or an automobile, an automobile and just go. Or, or wait, it'll be on or VOD, VOD and that iTunes too. and that kind of stuff in the spring. Hopefully, we're working on that. But so. it did make my list of most enjoyable cinematic experiences of last year. So, 
I'm just saying. That's not best film. That's most enjoyable cinematic yeah. experience. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, that could mean great time in the theater when okay, I saw it. <laughs> but I hated it. This, yeah. this interview is over. <laughs> 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 Thank you and good night. <laughs> This interview is done. Oh, Mary Smash! Mary Smash! Like, I haven't recorded since the summer. And then it was just like, for some reason, they couldn't get them up, but they didn't get them up.